Happy National Heroes Day, Bermuda. As we celebrate this special day, I'd like to pay tribute to national hero, Sir John Swan. Sir Swan has played a significant role in the landscape of Bermuda from entrepreneurship to politics. What makes this national hero's accomplishment significant to me is that he had to overcome challenges in his life when he was diagnosed with dyslexia during his college years. Despite having a disability, that never stopped him from accomplishing his goals and becoming a successful businessman in Bermuda. I'm the mom of a son who's affected by autism. Our, my son, or I should say our son, myself and Paul, our son was diagnosed at the age of two years old. Um, at, at 15 months, he lost all of his language. Um, he used to say mommy and daddy, and, and around 15 months, he stopped talking and was into himself. He was a shell of himself, and we had so many concerns about what was going on with him. And we spoke to his pediatrician, and he said, oh, he, he needs to go overseas and get diagnosed. And he gave him a diagnosis of development delay because we really didn't know exactly what was going on. So me and Paul traveled to Saray to Boston's Children's Hospital and there were three days Saray was tested um, by a psychologist, a behaviorist, um, a developmental doctor, a speech and language pathologist. And after three days of testing, the team of doctors uh, said to us that our son had autism. And in those days, I, I couldn't understand and had no knowledge of autism at all. It had never affected my life. And I just remember me and Paul going back to the room, the hotel room that night. And Saray was a happy child, so he's running around the room, giggling and doing his own thing. And all I could do was cry, hold my head off, because I couldn't fathom how he would be able to get everything that he needed um, and be a success in his life. I had no idea what autism was, but I knew that it would affect him significantly in his future. I mean, once we got the diagnosis, the doctors in Boston were like, oh, if he lived here, he would get all of these services immediately. But we didn't live there, we lived in Bermuda, and because I hadn't understood or heard anything about autism before, I had no idea what to look for when we returned home. And so the next day we did return to Bermuda and we had to figure out, we had this 20 page report and it said he needed, so he needed occupational therapy and physiotherapy and ABA and we looked at ourselves uh, with each other, me and Paul, and we're like, okay, well, let's let's figure it out. Let's get it get it going, and and we did. So myself and Paul, we educated ourselves. We learned what ABA was. We went overseas to a number of conferences. We went to the Geneva Center for Autism. Um, took classes so we could talk we could understand what autism was and what how our child learned um, I had friends Trish we went to conferences we both had had to hire someone to assist our child and I, I think it was about us being able to know that whatever we were doing as parents we were doing what was needed so that our children could could accomplish something in their futures, have the ability to work for themselves and care for themselves and do the things that they wanted to do when they grew up. And so it was just our mission to, to help our children access a world that was not really easy to access with a disability um, like autism. And so it was then that we, we, we thought about kind of having support groups that were necessary for 
our children, that for, for our parents, for all of those parents that were hiring children, hiring people to help with their children, there was a network of parents who didn't have others to talk to, who needed someone to talk to, who needed to bounce ideas off of others. And so we, we created a support group to help us through that. And then, you know, as the years went by, we, we thought, how could we, we make it better for our children? And so there was a team of people in the beginning who said, okay, let's, let's, let's go do something different. And so myself, Trish, and uh, my sister Rika were strong about creating a space for children to learn. And so Eureka, um, she developed a plan for a business plan and me and Trish, we hit the road running. We, we went to every business, every social event and went to every corporate office. We reached out to government. We reached out to the community and said, we want to raise funds to open up this phenomenal place for children with autism and other developmental disabilities and would you be a part of it and within six months we had four hundred and fifty thousand dollars and by year end so by october 2007 we were able to open up tomorrow's places we started off small we had five staff and we had for children, for clients. And Saray had, had the opportunity to be one of those clients. And the team that we hired, they were phenomenal. They wanted to change and help those children who were able to access their services. They wanted to give them every opportunity to have independence in their lives. And so Tomorrow's Place has started off small and we've grown so big. It's been, we are going into our 13th year in October. And so we've, we started off with four clients. We've had a number of clients pass through the doors of Tomorrow's Voices since opening. Those clients are, are given the opportunity to learn about how to communicate their parents learn how to facilitate their wants and needs and we have the, them being able to access education education on how their children learn education on what do i need to be an advocate for my child education on how do i spread and communicate how other children can learn and, and benefit from the services of tomorrow's voices we, we have been able to hire a phenomenal staff, students of Bermuda, those who have educated themselves and then come back to their island and want to make an impact on their community. We've been able to provide professional development opportunities for educators and health professionals who support our students and, and their their needs within the community it was because of all of the hard work that our families and our parents and our, our advocates and myself and trish and rika and all those other people put in that tomorrow's voices has been able to survive over these years what we knew was that if we were able to create this space for children with autism and other developmental disabilities that it would be phenomenal and it would change their lives and it has we've we've seen such great things coming up come out of that environment we've seen children move on to to spaces and places and environments that they never had access before to before before they were able to get intervention We've seen parents come out of their shells and become advocates for their children. We've seen happy, healthy, beautiful children come out of the space. And that's what it's for, is to give children the ability to have a better future. And knowing that without it, 
that they would have a disadvantage that they're typically developing and peers would. And, and there's all, there's so many things that children have to come up against in our world. Um, and because of their, their disability, they shouldn't have to. And so we've, we've overcome the challenge of having a play or not having a space, a safe space for our children to be able to learn from. We've created environments that they, they can have social interactions to grow socially with their peers and without peers. We've created spaces that they can use and have the ability to communicate their wants and needs. And without tomorrow's voices, they would have never had the ability to do that. We've seen happy and healthy and, and beautiful children access a life that they never would have been able to have in their futures. And for that, I'm proud. I'm proud to be a, have been a part of it. The challenge isn't over. We're going to always continue to have challenges as our young adults grow older and want and need to be a part of their communities. Um, but we're, we're there. We're ready. We're willing. We're, we're, we're going to be by their sides in order for them to get the best life ever and have the best life ever. I'm proud to be a part of it. It's been a challenge. I've cried more times than I can imagine. And, and a lot of the times they've been happy, happy tears because I've seen that without the, those challenges, we wouldn't be where we are today. As long as I'm alive and as, as long as there's people who are challenged, who have autism, who, who need support, as long as Saray is by my side and shows me that being able to overcome challenges is what's needed to get him to the other side, to give him the independence that he needs to make sure that he is happy and healthy in our community of Bermuda. So let's overcome the challenge and make it accessible for all. There are national heroes in our community of all walks of life. And I'm just so encouraged that those who have overcome challenges have the ability to become a national hero in the community. I see John Swan's determination as an example of how I've had to overcome challenges in my life in raising a son with autism. And his determination has shown me that despite one's challenges or limitations, they can accomplish anything in their lives and also become a Bermuda national hero too.